Hello, this is Professor Shapiro, known on the internet as Harry Hawk, and we are in week two. This is Wednesday night. It's the transition really from the first half of the week to the second half of the week. Tomorrow, Thursday, that's the 12th of April, we enter essentially the fourth week of the course. Yes, the fourth week of the course. That's how fast these eight week courses move. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this lecture. Uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover and we're really diving a lot deeper today into digital marketing, online marketing and what that means. And uh, there is also part of a homework assignment that's mentioned at the end of this. So make sure that you see that it will help you with the homework assignment. Um, the homework assignment being of course a discussion board. Now, again, a quick tour of our classroom, our Canvas classroom. This is the home page, and we can get to the reading assignments by clicking here. And that tells us what all of the hello, somebody's joining us. That is uh, fantastic and welcome. I'm just starting. Hello, out. Harry. This is Bettina. Hi. So glad that you're here. And uh, thank you. The, do you have, I'm just getting started with the lecture. Do you have any questions about the event marketing class? Um, not at the moment. I was just kind of going over everything, all the information on the files that you provided to us um, on top of just kind of reading everybody else's replies on the discussion and the assignments that you had for us. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and I see some is here too. And you can see my screen, okay? Christina, you can see my screen, okay? Um, I'm actually on the phone, not on the screen. So you can. So I can hear you, but I can't see you. So if you can take the address, and you could open it up on a phone or a tablet. Um, and see what I'm talking about also, if you wanted to. Oh, I know that. Okay, so uh, I will be a computer in a few minutes to that, the call to my iPad. Great. Yeah, you know, in, um, there is a feature where you can raise your hand if you have any questions. Um, Samantha, I'm going to unmute you here um, if I can. Um, do you have any questions? Can you see the screen okay? And also, this is chat window. So one, well, I'm going to assume, Samantha, that you can see okay and all of that. Uh, Christine, I am going to mute you and um, I'm going to keep on rolling along here with the lecture. I am recording this as I did last week. I'm so happy that you both are joining us and you have an opportunity to ask questions, uh, to raise your hand um, if you uh, want to ask me a question. And again, I have, uh, Samantha, I see you've unmuted yourself. Can you see everything okay? Samantha? Christine, I'm unmuting you just so it doesn't, the background doesn't cut into the. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I, I thought my phone was doing that. But Samantha, can you hear me or see me? You can also um, send a, uh, a text message. Um, so, um, Samantha dropped out. So, um, all right. Well, Christine, I'm going to continue and um, I'll check in with you uh, from time to time. Um, it's going to be a little hard to follow along until you're on the iPad, but uh, you can listen and uh, I hope this uh, makes some sense to you. So again, I'm giving a little tour here of our reading assignments. And you can see this week, it's all about digital marketing. And uh, that is really uh, fun and exciting. That is my 
personal area of expertise. And again, we have all of the different parts of the course. We can go into the modules here. We have week one, and uh, I've yet to put up the week two modules, but those will be going in um, tomorrow morning. All right. Um, I hope everybody has a great week. Let's start this lecture. So I have some slides on the screen here. And on this second slide, we have our agenda. Um, we're going to talk about digital marketing and talk about media and touch points and how those create funnels and how we use tracking and analytics to measure and monitor the funnels. And then I'm going to dive very specifically into digital marketing for events. That's the whole lecture today. It's very simple, but there's a lot of ground to cover. And on the other side of the slide, I have a list of our readings, which I just mentioned earlier, but in chapter three, uh, pages uh, 47 through 77, uh, as well as um, in chapter three, pages 77 through 84. So not a lot of reading, um, but a lot of very important things about digital marketing, the influence of social media, and the challenges. I see, Samantha, that you have come back in. Um, if you care to talk, I hope you can see uh, the slides OK. And again, I very much appreciate you for joining. And um, I'm now going to the third slide to talk about learning outcomes for today's lecture. Uh, students should be increasingly familiar with the PESO model, and be able to identify which part of the model a particular type of media belongs to, including those that fit between sections based on usage. And students should understand how sales funnels work, should be able to conceptualize how various touch points combine to create a funnel both online and offline. And students should understand how Facebook and Instagram advertising works. Students should understand how to use offline attribution with an event. And students should be able to conceptually link uh, how an app would create connect to Facebook using something called the SDK, which we'll, we'll talk about just a little bit. That's a more advanced uh, topic. Um, Samantha, I see you got your mic back. Do you have a question? And can you see me okay, see the screen? All right, well, I'm, I'm gonna assume that you can, um, but you can uh, also uh, send a text message if you need to. Um, I see you've bounced in and out again here. Um, so I'm not sure um, what's going on, but uh, you can certainly send me a text message uh, through the chat if you wish to. So going on to the, hello. I can hear you, hello, Samantha. Oh, hi. Can you see my screen? I thought you, yeah. Fantastic. That's what I wanted to make sure. And um, any questions so far? Did you have any questions so far? No. Okay, great. So um, let's get into the lecture here. No, no, I'm fine. So I've got everybody muted at the moment. Um, and we're looking at the next slide, which is the PESO model for media, paid, earned, shared, and owned media. And this is the same slide that we talked about in the first week during the lecture. And it is a model that was created by Jeannie Dietrich at Armand Dietrich uh, PR Agency. Um, and it lays out all kinds of different media and lets us understand how they work. Obviously, when you pay for advertising, that's paid media, and that's understandable. Earned media relates to publicity when a TV station, a radio station, a newspaper, or even a blogger might cover you um, without you paying them. They just found out about you, and they put you on the uh, evening news, or they do an article in the local paper about you. But 
What's interesting about the peso model is in between paid and earned, there, paid is kind of a light orange and earned is a darker orange. In the middle, there's like a, a mid orange color. Um, and that's that boundary between paid and earned. And you may be sponsoring uh, something or paying an influencer um, to cover you. And so it would be in that middle section. And the important part about understanding the peso model is that we can take any kind of media, traditional or digital or any future media, and we can make it fit into this model. And to understand, uh, for example, if you post something on Instagram that's shared, and then if you boost it with a little bit of extra money, that part, the boosted part is paid. And if somebody sees that and decides to write an article about you in the newspaper, that newspaper article that results, of course, is earned, earned on the merits. Um, so I'm gonna, Christine and Samantha, either of you have any questions about the paper model? No. Okay, awesome. All right, and so now I'm gonna to go to the next slide here. And I have an image here um, that was created for me and it shows how the internet works in terms of marketing and advertising. Um, in the bottom corner, we have our audience. This is the people that we're trying to uh, reach out to. And you can see on the bottom row, they're like a light purple. And as they go up, eventually they become dark purple and blue. And we see something called LTV in here, lifetime value. But the idea is as we work through our media and reach out to people and contact them again and again, that the quality of the audience increases, the quality gets better. We can see on this image, we have paid media, owned media. Owned media is like your own website or something that you might print like a flyer or a poster. We have shared media. Now we don't see earned in here, but earned uh, could easily uh, be part of this, such as again, PR and so forth. And the idea is as we cycle through, first wave on the outside is sort of owned and shared. We build a basic audience. And then every time we re-engage with that audience, um, we get less people, the audience gets smaller, but the quality increases until finally we have some well-known people, the idea at that level where someone turns purple to then into blue, and we see the dollar signs, that means that's somebody who's actually paying to use our service in the case of an event, it might be buying a ticket to our event, or it might mean buying something at our event. So this is how um, we use media to, to reach out, to influence people, to build up a basic audience. And then over time, through additional messaging, through additional media, narrow them down into a more selective, high quality list who will eventually purchase. And that's ultimately what we call a funnel. We talked about funnels last time. And we talked about the marketing like a pirate model, A-A-R-R-R -R -R or R. But what we're looking here now is a different funnel. It's very similar. And it, at the top, at the broad part, it's awareness and then consideration, preference, action, loyalty, and advocacy. Advocacy meaning that somebody is gonna go out and recommend you. And this is a, just a traditional marketing funnel. And you can see on the left side for awareness, there's TV and radio out of door, meaning post, meaning um, billboards. And then for consideration, as we're getting people to think about our product, direct mail and brochures. And then for preference, um, some kind of product test comparison, action is uh, in-store purchase and uh, reward points for loyalty. On the right side, we see how that translates into the modern, more digital marketing age. Instead of TV and radio and billboards, 
we have search, meaning Google, and just general buzz, like, well, BuzzFeed, but also just, you know, shared posts all around going viral wherever they are on Pinterest or Snap, and of course, blogs. And then for consideration where someone before might have gotten a direct mail or a brochure, online they're doing research, or going back to the search engines. And um, then um, for social networks, like YouTube and local sort of search is where we get preference. Um, you might go on to YouTube to see how a product works or get a hands-on review or to see a recipe using a particular ingredient. Finally, for action, there's all kinds of ways to get people to take action. Of course, online stores like Amazon, um, apps that give you in-store discounts or mobile purchases on a mobile phone, group discounts like Groupon. Um, finally, that whole loyalty is getting them to friend you on Facebook or Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, wherever it is that uh, you've set up. And finally, that advocacy is getting people to put out a review, whether it's on Instagram or Google Plus or Facebook or any of other kinds of sites like TripAdvisor. So this, this is a, a particularly complete funnel and it doesn't necessarily match up to event marketing, but it's, it's useful to think about because it lays out the media. And so what I want us to think about here as we're looking at the right side of this in the search online, uh, social networks, group discounts, friending and reviews is to think about the peso model. I'm quickly gonna um, switch back to the peso model here again, earned, shared, owned and paid. So that when we come to this funnel now, back at the funnel here, we can think about where something fits. Earned media in a way, we can think about search engine there because we're earning um, rank. Online research, you know, can be uh, owned or earned because when people search or discover, they may find our website. Social networks are shared, of course, and so forth. So we can place all of these different types of media somewhere within the peso model. So now we're back to that diagram, the first one that I showed where we talk about, we have a, a broad audience that um, is not necessarily high quality. Again, that's the audience that we see in the funnel from search, from buzz, from blogs, just people starting to learn about us. And then as they go down the funnel, as someone goes down the funnel, um, the quality of the audience gets up and eventually we get to that purchase, which on the funnel is the action, the purple item. The idea here of this arrow that goes back to the top is showing that when somebody leaves a review and say on TripAdvisor and other people see it, from that one purchase, you may get other purchases. Historically, that's word of mouth, and that should really be on that original funnel, but they didn't put it there. All right, so this next chart that we're looking at is showing a typical kind of conversion. Um, and it's really, if we go back and look at this chart where the purple people on the bottom, it's really replicating this chart as we start to get views of our website or our store or uh, our event page, um, we have that broad kind of very light purple colored audience at the bottom. There's lots of them and we really don't know why they're coming. They may be going to the wrong website. A lot of them may stay around only literally for one or two seconds or even less time. But then they, they start to integrate themselves into the site, meaning they start to look around the site so some people have gone away. We've only got 80%. And again, these numbers are just illustrative, meaning they're just example numbers. Every website's gonna be different. But as soon as people start to look around the site, they're saying that they're a little bit interested in us. And again, back to this diagram of the purple people, we can see that the quality is going up. The people who are willing to actually scroll and look around your site implies that you know they're interested on a customer site just recently, 
um, the people who registered for an online event, so an event, an online webinar, um, all but one person who registered scrolled on the website. So, you know, the fact that people are just even moving the page and scrolling down the page implies that they're interested. Not everybody who scrolled registered for the event, but only one person who didn't scroll registered. If we're talking about e-commerce, eventually we get some people who add stuff to the cart, but not everybody who adds any item to the cart is necessarily going to, you know, make that purchase. In the case of events, that's looking at the tickets and they may, you know, say, oh, well, how much are those VIP tickets? How much are those front row tickets? You know, um, it takes a lot of work to go from add to cart to checkout. And when we get to checkout, um, again, the audience diminishes. People have to enter their payment information. They may have forgotten their credit card. They may not remember the code to activate their credit card or maybe their credit card has expired or has used up uh, too much, uh, they spent too much money that month and they don't have enough uh, room on the card for the transaction. There's all kinds of reasons why checkouts don't work. But finally, here at the end, we get a complete transaction. And uh, again, that's much like what we're seeing here on this original chart where we have that dark purple blue uh, group who are spending money. Um, as part of that process, as we look at each of the steps, and in this previous chart, there's five steps. Just looking at um, the early parts of those steps, people come in, they're anonymous. Again, at the bottom, they're that light purple group. Um, we don't know who they are, and people can come in on their phone and then later at home on their TV or their laptop or tablet on a friend's phone, on a family member's device. We really, it can look like we have a lot of people coming, but it could be one or two people who've come three or four times and on different devices. So that might look like six or seven people, but it turns out, you know, that it eventually we find out that it's just a, a few people, but eventually people become known to us. So they go from anonymous to known and that's, part of the internet marketing. And when I say known, that means they've given you an email, they've given you a phone number, they've given you a shipping address, a first name and last name. It could be any of those or all of those things. I'm gonna pause here for a second and see, um, I'm gonna unmute and see if, uh, does anybody have a question? Anybody have a question? No. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll move up to everyone again. And what we have here is before we know who somebody is, we know something about them. If we think back to the chart where we have the people starting to search and look at the content, we know what content people have looked at before, often we know who they are. And so there's all kinds of messaging and tracking and evaluation that we can do just based on what parts of our website they've been to and what they do, how much time they spend there. And so for our events, it, you know, it's important that we, we can build um, very sophisticated websites and apps that can help people find what they're looking for by understanding what parts of the site they have come to and then giving them more of what they're looking for. All right, so we're on to the next part of this lecture, which is now talking about digital marketing for events specifically. Everything that I've been talking about before applies to all digital marketing, whether it's e-commerce or anything else. And again, to summarize, you know, with digital marketing, we're gonna create some kind of funnel. Um, we're gonna use a variety of media, media that can be considered to be somewhere within the PESO model, social, blogs, video, search engine, even traditional media, print, advertising, and of course, paid social like Facebook, Instagram, Snap, and so forth. Um, but when we're thinking about digital marketing for events, 
it's very important that we think about before, during, and after. Those are three very unique time frames, and each one of those needs its own funnel. And again, ultimately, a funnel is what we call a collection of touch points. Somebody comes to your website, that's a touch point. Somebody comes back a day later, looks at it again, that's another touch point. Somebody shares um, a web address with their friend when their friend receives that web address, that's considered a touch point. If they email us, touch point. If they chat with us, if they call us up and ask to talk to somebody, that's a touch point. Um, our funnels are made up of touch points. And so before the event, we're gonna be doing a lot of social, trying to build awareness. We may ask people to sign up for our email list or when someone signs up and actually purchases tickets, we may put them on a somebody who purchased tickets events. Um, and it's very important ultimately that we are collecting phone numbers and emails. And I'll come to this very clearly in a few minutes when we talk about offline conversion, when we're trying to see somebody who did something in real life, if they've seen one of our ads. Um, but there's many reasons that we legitimately need someone's email. If you bought tickets to our event, what if it's canceled? What if there's a heavy rain for an outside event? What if we have to change a schedule? Or what if there's some kind of security alert and we need to tell people to bring their IDs or um, all sorts of things that might make it necessary to communicate to the people to let them know uh, what's happening with the event. So again, we have social, email, paid, traditional, offline. I'm not showing earned media, but earned media is in here too. Obviously, uh, all of the peso model uh, is in here, but we need to think about how we would use social before an event, you know, is very broadly, very widely um, before the event. Now people have bought their tickets and maybe day of we're selling some tickets. During the event, it's very different, right? we're really trying to reach those people who are at the event to make sure that they're having a good time, to make sure that if there's a problem or an issue, if someone's sick or gets hurt, that we're aware of it. And if they're letting us know that we're responding, because we don't want someone to get hurt and it goes viral on social media and we're doing nothing, right? So during the event, we want to make sure that we're encouraging and helping everybody at the event have the best time, find directions, find their way to the right meeting rooms or whatever it is to the activities. And of course we do want to, you know, encourage people to do stuff, um, you know, to be part of our event. So, you know, I can add some things here um, to, to really help. Um, so we, we can add in sorry here I'm doing a little format um, difficulty here. There we go. So I want to add in apps because that's a big part of things that happen at events. Uh, RFID bracelets, which we can use for tracking. Uh, and there's lots of other things that can happen. We might want an Instagram sharing point someplace at the event um, where someone can take a picture and share that on Instagram, because that's the other thing that we really want to do at our events is to encourage people to let other people know that they're having a good time. It may only be a three hour event. And by the time people see the shares, it may likely be over. It may not be possible for them to come and get a ticket, but we want them to know that people are there having a good time because Hopefully we're gonna be doing this event again. 
Some places do a particular event once a week or once a month. Some places do it once a year or every other year. But if we're gonna do an event again, or if it's related to a particular business or other sort of business selling opportunity, we want people to learn about that opportunity. And so getting people to share at an event is very important. Finally, the last part of the funnel is after, after the event. Um, we wanna reach out to people, make sure they had a good time. We may have an early selling time to sell in advance a ticket for next year or to reserve a booth if it's commercial. You know, at the end of the conference, they'll go around to everybody who's attending, you know, professionally who bought a booth and ask them to buy their booth for next year. Um, you know, very important. So um, what's important here is that we, that we're thinking about, sorry, I have to reword the slides a little bit, that we're thinking about these funnels um, both before, during, and after each event. I see Christine is back. Welcome. Um, we want to think about these digital marketing events before, during, and after that there's three separate funnels where we have very, very different communication objectives. As I just said before, it's about awareness and ticket sales. During the event, it's often about customer service, the quality of the event, and also sharing to get awareness for future events um, or other days of the event, if we have a multi-day event. And afterwards, it's continuing to build that awareness and potentially lead to sales opportunities uh, depending on what we're doing. So then this brings us to offline events. This is kind of a new thing, but we can take our Facebook ads or Google search ads and we can compare them to actual events that happen in the real world. For a client of mine, they had a in-store sale. Um, they only have three of these a year. One of them was for St. Patrick's Day. They're a pot of gold sale. And we ran internet ads, particularly Facebook ads. We ran about $700 of Facebook ads and we sold thousands and thousands of dollars of product online. But this was an in-store event where you have to be you know, at the store to get the best discounts. But we were able to take the emails of everybody who purchased and compare them to the people who saw the ads matched through the email. It's sort of anonymous. It doesn't really sound that way because you're using emails, but Facebook lets you upload the emails and the time and the date of when they came into the store and it will compare it to see if they've seen an ad in the day before or seven days before or even 28 days before in those three different time periods. And that's what an offline conversion is. And they have all kinds of events like register, enter payment and purchase. So when you're doing an event, whether it's an online webinar or it's an in-person event, if we're capturing emails, we can go back and see if the people who attended saw the ads. Well, if your event is full and you've sold out, or if something went wrong and you didn't sell out, obviously there's very little you can do at that point to change it. Either it sold out or it didn't. But we want to know how effective our marketing was. And did the people who show up, did they see it? And how long before they saw it, did they make the purchase? And so by tracking uh, offline registrations, so a lot of like third party Ticketing systems can't really talk back to Facebook, but they give you an email um, every time uh, somebody registers because they have to enter their email address. We can upload those every day and find out if the people who registered, if they saw the ads. And um, this is just really powerful. We'll be talking about this a lot more during the course because a big part of the learning outcome is to be able to create a database of emails and things and how to use those. But um, I'm gonna pause here and unmute. And uh, any questions about offline events? All right. Any questions about offline events? Right. I'm gonna mute everybody again. 
Um, you can always raise your hand if you have a question. Um, so we're now looking at a slide that is showing the offline attribution and sales. In this case, it's for a physical event. Um, and on this particular slide, uh, $535 in ads um, were attributed um, to 32,000 in sales. And um, we can see on each of the different days of the sale, um, how many people attributed to it. In other words, if people who were spending in the store, if they saw the ad and 117 people who purchased had seen ads representing th those 117 people bought $32,000, almost $33,000 with the product. This doesn't help you sell but it shows you that your online efforts are actually paying off. And that's the net effect of offline. Also, when you're doing specifically at events, there's always two parts, at least. Uh, there is the ticket sale and then seeing if people show up. And often many events will have a free or very low cost admission, which means a lot of people may not show up because if they got a ticket for free, there's not a lot of incentive to show up if it's a rainy day or that sort of thing. And you may give out those free tickets through various and different channels. And so um, one of what helps with offline conversion tracking is if you are giving away free tickets um, and you get the email of everybody who got a free ticket um, and you, you can track then back to um, the channel and, and see if people who got the tickets for free from a particular source, if uh, those people actually attended. All right, so how can you use offline event tracking? Um, again, you could build email capture into a registration form. Um, it's all about capturing emails and phone numbers, especially cell phone numbers, uh, first name and last name. There are other bits of data that you can capture to do the offline, but the, the most important one is a personal email. Um, you could use offline tracking to get attendance. Um, if you're taking attendance at a webinar, an online event, you're asking people to put in their email uh, to get inside the webinar. Um, if you're taking reservations, asking for an email. So even at a restaurant, um, if you're taking the email or phone number of people who are making a reservation, you can tie that number back to see if people who made the reservation saw an ad. Again, as I just mentioned, if there's a free activity, the, the cost of getting that free ticket or entry could be an email or a phone number. Same with free food. Or you could give away free food or a free beverage um, if people would give their email or phone number. So there's lots of ways of using these to match different activities within your event to the ads that you're running to see if they're working. So um, we're back here to those funnels again. And just again, pointing out, we want to have three different sets of funnels, three different sets of touch points, three different media configurations before, during, and after our event to really get the most value out of our event. We wanna have great attendance. We want those people who are attending to have a great time. And we wanna use that to build awareness after the event so that we have attendance at our next event or new customers for our product. So getting into what we're gonna be working on for our case study this week. Um, I have a slide up here on Facebook Dynamic Creative. It's a very innovative new tool that Facebook has. Traditionally, when you would make an ad, you had to pick one video or one still image, and then you could write a little bit of body text. You could write one headline, one subhead, and some kind of call to action like book now or apply now. And for every variation, you'd have to make a new ad. So if you wanted to have some 
with the Spanish word and some in French and some half and half and some all Spanish. And you'd have to make hundreds, maybe thousands of different kinds of ads. You still may need to make more than one Facebook dynamic creative ad. So we could do one in English and one in Spanish and maybe one with some mixed uh, text just to see how that works. Um, but let's just say we're doing it in English. Um, to create a dynamic creative ad, we can select up to 10 videos or 10 images. We can't mix the two, but it can be 10 videos or 10 images. And these could be Instagram friendly videos or Facebook or both or some combination. And then the body text of our ad, we can have up to five different body texts. So we can talk about the five different attributes of our event. If we're doing an event about wine, we could talk about the fact that we have Northern California wines. We could talk about that we have some wines from Baja. We could talk about that we have some wines from Argentina. Uh, we could talk about at our wine event, we have some non-alcohol or alcohol-free wines. And we could talk about that we have a whole tasting seminar. So we, we could pick five different points and write copy about that. And again, up to five headlines, five subheads, and a, a bunch of different calls to action. We create that within one single ad and then Facebook makes every possible combination. And um, so the question is, what do they look like and how do we see that? Uh, I have two links here, which you can follow on your own uh, after the lecture. Uh, the first one talks about the creative ads, how they work. And the second one is the actual different types of ads that Facebook lets you create. And these are two good resources for thinking about your event. But I have a little video that I recorded which I'm going to play. And this video talks about the dynamic creative ad. And what you're seeing on the right side of the screen is an actual dynamic creative ad. But because there's so many variations, you can't really see all of the ads. There's no one place that you can see these hundreds of different ads. And, and I wanna be clear, when I say hundreds, I really mean that up to 6,000 or more. Um, if we had one video, one headline, and one body text, well, that's just one ad. But if we added a second body text, um, now we have five or six different ads that we can create out of that. And every time we add another unit, another headline, another body text, we get all these permutations, all these derivatives. And eventually we get hundreds or thousands of different ads that Facebook can uh, show. So here's, here's this little video. Facebook dynamic creative and there's a lot here so I want to explain this first link lets us look at different types of placements this ad has been set up for desktop only so we're not going to see Instagram and some of the mobile formats but that also keeps it very simple and easy to look at and so this is what it would look like on your regular desktop feed. And then there's all. All right, so I'm gonna pause it there. I encourage you, this is a four and a half minute video. I encourage you to watch this video on your own. It's in the slide deck, which I will share uh, as part of um, our uh, lecture this week. So you can go in and see these slides. Um, And now I want to talk about homework. And again, when I mean homework, I mean something that we're going to do and share in the discussion board. Specifically, this is a case study. And so you're going to do the following for your event, for your track. So if you're doing a pizza event, track one, meaning it's your event, you're making money from it, then you would do it about your pizza event. If you're track three and you're helping somebody else sell pizza by helping to manage or create or run an event for them to create or sell pizza. Ah, we have uh, somebody else uh, joining us here. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'll be unmuting you in a moment. Um, we're talking about our um, upcoming homework assignment for this week, a discussion board. Uh, case about 
creating uh, online or digital advertising for our event. So again, you're going to answer this based on your event and your track. If you happen to be track two, which means you're trying to get a job at somebody else's business, helping them with events or work as a freelance or independent contractor, um, then you're going to think about how to promote your skill or your service. And so this is a three part question that again, you're going to answer from the perspective of your event and your track. So pick a social app, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, or Pinterest. So pick any one of those and then talk about how you'll use it before, during, and after your event. Now you can use different networks if you want. You don't have to stick with one. So before you might use Instagram, during you might use Facebook, uh, and after you might use Pinterest. Um, a good one to actually use during an event is Snapchat because of their geo filters, um, but Instagram has starting to put in a lot of those features as well. You can answer this simply just with one particular network. So you could talk about how you use Pinterest before to build awareness, how you'll use it during the event to encourage people to pin things, and then afterwards, how you'll use it as well. Again, you're going to do this for your event and your particular track. Step two is explain how you will capture emails for offline tracking. Um, tell me what you will do or say to get them. So again, it depends uh, on your track. If you're a track one or three, um, figure out what you're going to do for a day of attendance. And I want you to get email, phone, and first name. So you could put that on the ticket. Um, form when someone's buying the ticket or something if they're getting the ticket in person um, that you would need to record it. If you're giving away free tickets, however, then how are you going to get someone to give you that? Maybe they get a prize or a bag or some kind of gift for, but it requires them to register. Um, if you're looking for job leads, then I want you to get email, phone number, first name, and last name. And again, think about how you're going to do that. An example might be um, by emailing somebody a resume, you're generally going to get their email, uh, first name and last name. And then perhaps by uh, connecting with them on LinkedIn, uh, you'll get the phone number. The final step is to design a dynamic creative ad for Facebook. And I'm not asking you to lay out the ad. Um, that's what Facebook does for you. Facebook designs the ad. What I want you to do is come up with three images, three blocks of body text. Again, each block is for one ad. So you, you, have, you can have three paragraphs in one ad and then three different paragraphs in the next ad. And then the final ad could have one paragraph or two or four. Um, but generally, there are limits on Facebook to the number of characters. So we're really talking about a paragraph's worth of text, which could be broken up. So for the text body, for the body text, um, three different copy examples. Then I want four headlines. They need to be 25 characters or less. And four link descriptions, um, which is really a subhead. And those can be up to 30 characters in length. And then call to action. Um, the call to action is a little bit hard um, to explain, but I have an example here. Back a few slides, I'm now showing. These are examples of Facebook's call to action. They're very specific ones. You can't pick your own, but they are no button, apply now, book now, contact us, download, learn more, request time, see menu, shop now, sign up, watch more. There are some others, you can search for them. Um, but as part of this assignment, you will need to uh, pick at least one call to action. So again, to summarize for your event, for your track, you will pick a social app and explain how you'll use it before, during, and after your event. You will come up with a rationale for how you will capture emails for offline tracking, uh, tracks one and three for day of attendance. Um, I a little type here, day of attendance. And um, And then the Facebook dynamic ad um, where we will ask you to select 
three images, three blocks, four headlines, four link descriptions, and at least one call to action. If you don't want to do three images, you could tell me about three videos and describe the videos uh, and their length. Um, so I'll put that in here as well. Four, three videos, describe action plus length. All right, so that is the end of the prepared lecture. Uh, I'm going to unmute the um, everybody who's here and are there some questions I can answer? Um, yeah, the homework is due when? It's going to be due by Sunday. It's, it's due, you're going to post this, you know, within the discussion forum. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a case study. It will be available uh, sometime tomorrow, Thursday. Okay. Is it clear what I'm looking for? Does it make sense? Yeah. Well, I have a, a, a doubt about the explanation how to will capture emails. Sure, please. What's the question? In the second part, for job lists, so we have to explain like the so how. Are you, are you track two? Yeah. Okay. So what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I'm on track three. Okay. Sorry. So, so yeah. for, you don't have to answer the track two question. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I saw. Okay, so I have to answer just the one. Yeah. Okay. Right, because if you're looking for a job, you know, unless you're uh, very famous, people aren't going to line up to uh, interview you, you know. But so the job leads is for someone else who may be track two, I can explain. It's for someone okay. looking for work you know, you're networking and you're trying to get people to send a resume to whatever, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Running. But for, for yourself, where you're track three, you know, at the attendance, you, you know, um, how are you going to um, capture email, phone number, and first name? You're doing this really for your client, mm -hmm. right? Because you're trying to sell their candy or their laundry detergent or their artisan gumball, whatever. Yeah. Um, what other questions? Or do you want me to go back to a particular slide? And, and the number three, design and dynamic creative, creative and uh, yep. Facebook. So you just need to select three images that fit your event. Mm -hmm. Write three short blocks of text for the body. And um, if you watch this video, um, I'm going to make the slide and the video available as soon as I can. Okay. If you go in here, you can see the blocks of text. And mm -hmm. here, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and click on uh, here. Facebook um, gives you uh, all the different ad formats. So we're doing image ad. So if you want to get the specs, you would click here, get specs. And um, it tells you all the specs are, and again, like the headline is 25 characters and so forth. Oh, okay. Can use actually 360 degree photos, so that could be really interesting for mm -hmm. particular events. And then th this top link goes into dynamic face uh, um, a little bit more detail. Um, it provides links, it kind of explains how they work a little bit. Um, but um, you're not going to actually create the ad. I just want to mm -hmm. see what you what you would put into it. Oh, okay, okay. I have a question, Harry. Please. Um, so for uh, for number three in the homework, the headlines have to go with the uh, three pictures and videos that we choose, or is is everything completely separate? Everything's completely separate, so they should match. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you might want to put. A headline in Spanish and everything else is in English, you know. Okay, so basically we're using those three pictures, but we're using the headlines that can go with those three pictures if, I, if we wanted to. 
Right. Well, Facebook is going to com combine them in every possible combination. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. And you'll see this in the video. And mm -hmm. it'll, it'll make every mix and match. Every, okay. And it's, so it's going to test because it may turn out, you know, so, you know, we're, we're doing um, a breakfast brunch kind of thing. Um, and, um, you know, so maybe the event is called uh, Butter and Eggs, right? But maybe you want to try a headline where you say, you know, Huevos de Mantequilla. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that, maybe that just, it's horrible. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't really translate. I mean, it's literal, but it doesn't necessarily convey breakfast in the same way it might to an English speaking audience, but you never know, right? If your events in San Diego, you know, yeah. you might understand it. Yeah. So what we're doing in ads is to try like, some of them I have like an internet web address. Others I have like explaining the product. Um, these are actual ads that I'm running right now that you'll see in that video. Okay. And I'm so glad you're both here to ask these questions because I'm sure other people have them. And it's, so you're doing a really great service for the whole class. I hope other people will join us when we do these. Um, what other questions can I answer? Um. I think that's pretty much it. Is there a specific format that you want them in? Like, can we upload it like from a Word document or do you want a PowerPoint? Um, it, it's got to go into the discussion board. So uh, you can post it all right in there. Okay. But if you could, yes, you could do a link to a Google Doc. Oh, okay. So I'll probably do that. It'll probably be easier and more explainable. But, you know, I want there to be discussion in the discussion. So I would say if you want for part three to be like in a Google Doc, that's great. But these others, I really would like, you could just paste in text that you write. So we have something to see right in the discussion board. Right, okay. Okay, so uh, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm, we're at the hour point. So I'm gonna stop in a minute, but did anything else come to mind? Any questions about the class? Any feedback is something if there's anything confusing or a concern, I'd be happy to address it. Okay. How's the textbook? Are you both enjoying the textbook? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually really, really interested in it. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of information there that I've always was skeptical about, especially when I um, travel or when I'm doing some kind of business interaction I'm like well why does that happen and when I was reading on the leisure part mm -hmm. I was like that makes a lot of sense you see a lot of people taking extra days to go like for example when you had the Comic Con event you see people you know dining out and taking extra days just to enjoy you know San Diego and I was like oh okay and then you know so some of them would be with their significant others Yep. Or even, you know, take their family to the beach or whatever. So it's, it's really interesting how this class is actually coming together for me. Awesome. I think it's a fantastic textbook. I think the whole thing is worth reading. I'm just, I'm trying not to overload students with reading and, and asking people to invest time in the discussions so that we actually have some interaction with each other. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Everything is great so far and understandable. Awesome. Any other feedback from either of you? No, it's fine. <clears throat> um, I, I think everything is great. Um, I took your class last time for sales, and I know there was a lot of reading, so it's kind of hard for me to keep up with it. But I feel with, with the pages that you're choosing from the book, are just, they just they're just perfect, and for me to understand exactly what you want us to do and what we should be thinking about and how to just get to the point um, for the marketing class. It was so hard with that one credit sales class because <laughs> the textbook is so good. Yes. And, and it's explaining it so clearly, you can't like skip a part of the sales process, you know? Right. Um, but I, I appreciate the feedback and um, that was definitely one of the reasons I wanted to really try to drive the discussions in these classes and, and really try to 
pick just the, the minimal amount of reading. You can always read more on your own, you know. So, and you got yep. access to you on, did you buy it online or did you buy the, the hard copy? I bought the online version. It was only 26 bucks. Yeah, me too. That's great price. And you get a lifetime access? No, it's only for the amount of, uh, for the semester. Ah, okay. Well, still um, print it off if you need it. All right. Well, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much. This works so much better when there's people here and, uh, you know, I can answer questions. I feel like I'm doing a much better job. I don't know if I am, but uh, anyway, it feels much better. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great week and uh, this will be posted online so you can come back and watch it, anything you may have missed or what have you. Okay, thank, thank you, Mary. You. My pleasure. Have a good one. Have a good